Isha, how about you? You raise your hand. If you had to vote today for Harris, why Harris? Um, I just want to see what she will do because I know she's going to have to run again later. So I'm hoping she will get, like, be an exemplary president for this term. That's my only reason. Okay. And Abigail, how about you? I need to... Some people said some things tonight that uh, motivate me to do a little bit more research about the other side to January 6th that I haven't heard about before. But the thing is, I do not want to vote for someone. I do not want to tell my children that I voted for someone that that actually threatened democracy. I get, you know what I mean? I need to analyze and think a little bit more before I just vote for Trump. <coughs> Oh, okay. So first of all, we thank everybody for participating. Absolutely no bad things to say about people who participate in these conversations. We thank you so much. <laughs> but does anybody at this table need to take a deep breath? Because I do. I just yeah. do. We've been listening to Undecideds for weeks on, on two-way, and it is, it's really hard to believe that there are still people who might vote third party or try to write in. It's just such yeah. a lack of understanding about the stakes and about why that's just throwing your vote away. Oh, yeah. That, to me, is an insult to these young people. They just don't understand. Wait a minute. Lee, do you feel that there is a deep disconnect between these millionaires sitting around a table in a million dollar studio? Yeah, just slightly. I mean, it is hilarious to come back from Gen Zers who are making some solid points. I mean, they've been misled in terms of uh, thinking that January 6th is all that matters and things like that. And the, the girl who had a good thought, we should not vote for something that threatens democracy, doesn't understand what's the, the deeper uh, reality, which is that our democracy has been destroyed many decades ago carefully and by money and interest in so many ways, so that yeah. democracy is gone. Uh, and she doesn't understand that, but her drive is a good, honest drive to care about democracy. And then you cut back to these, like you say, multimillionaires sitting around in a circle going, oh my goodness, why, how could Gen Zers not just get in line behind Harris? What is wrong with them? Good to have you back on the channel. Thanks for having me. Man, you had a young photo of me there. It really, really ages you when you, you know, show, show, show everybody a photo of how I looked 10 years ago. You know what? I had to because you know what? We're always young on the inside. See, you have a very young spirit, you know, Thanks. even though you scream at the, the warmongers to get off your lawn, you still maintain that youthful appearance. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't have said it better myself. How you been? Yeah, you're glowing, bro. You're glowing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Thanks. So I got right. the uh, for for those watching uh, the the visual here. I got the uh, collapsing empire behind me. The uh, New York City yeah. subway station. So. Yeah, yeah. It looks like uh, it needs some work, but that's what we're here for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Lee, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is uh, as far as is just getting your initial thoughts about the campaigns that are going on. So, of course, you have Kamala Harris. Uh, with her campaign, of course, she decided to enlist her friend Barack to basically scold people that look like me and that are the same gender as me into <laughs> voting for somebody like a Kamala Harris. I just want to get your thoughts on that first when he said basically that we are not, uh, we're not riding with her because of her womanhood. Uh, what does that signal to you that Barack is going that route? Well, Barack Obama has has proven he'll play this role throughout his career. You know, the people who supported him, I supported him the first time around. I was I was mm -hmm. a young lad in my 20s, and I thought that he might be a little different than what we'd seen. And I was quickly proven wrong. Took about a year of Barack Obama in office before I was like, Oh, they're the same party. I get it now. I get it. Uh, yeah. It was a good, it, you know, I got to thank Barack Obama for truly waking me up. I was close, but it took him to push me over the edge and go, oh, these, it's all the same shit. And it, it was, you know, it was an important time in my life. And I'd like to thank him for being my teacher in that. Uh, but he has proven he'll play this role again and again. And it didn't matter 
we learned immediately after he left office, it didn't matter whether he was in office or out of office, he was going to keep playing this role. A lot of people thought, oh, he was being held back by Congress. That's why he couldn't stop the wars. That's why he had the surge in Afghanistan. That's why he, he could, could only give us corporate corporatized health care. That's why, you know, in, in, insert, insert your uh, topic that you care about most here. That's why he couldn't get it done. Once he's out of the presidency, he'll be swinging for the fences, doing every, you know, speaking out. Instead, they've used him. You'll recall they they used him to, or rather he volunteered. I'm not saying people control him in this way, but uh, he may have volunteered to be the one to shut down the NBA strike when the NBA players were, were striking to be treated better, to get better salary, all those things, uh, to not be... Uh, you know, for lack of a better term, treated like slaves in terms of the number of games they play, which is like unfathomable, those type of things. And he calls him up and says, you know, it's important that you guys not strike right now. And he ends that strike. And we've seen this again and again from him. He's the person brought in, usually when it has to do with black people in America, and he's the one who's brought in to say, no, no, get back into the fold, you silly folks. Run back in and support the war machine, support the death and destruction, support candidate A, B, or C, who's going to keep things exactly the way they are and keep funneling money to the billionaires while we see a genocide in Gaza. And he's just played that role before, during, and after his presidency. So, Lee, are you telling me that it actually has more to do with policy and record? <laughs> yeah. Am I am I saying that perhaps we should look at actions instead of what these folks say? Is that what is that what it could be? Uh yeah, you look at look at what these people actually do. And you know, the to me the only difference between the Democrats and the Republicans is it seems Obama largely waited until he finished being president to then enrich himself with the presidency. Like within two weeks or whatever it was of being done. He ran to Wall Street, gave one speech for something like $400,000. Uh, Trump worked on enriching himself in the presidency. So it was just that it's that two week span is the difference between Democrats and Republicans. Oh, man, the lines between Barry and Donnie just keeps getting blurred more and more. And we just can't tell. Who's who? But I want to share this as well. This is a shout out to Case Study QB for this. It's a focus group of undecided Gen Z voters. Now, of course, Lee, you and I, even though we do have a beautifully youthful appearance, uh, we are not Gen Z, but we also look at them and go, hey, you guys seem pretty cool. Why don't you guys take down the empire with us? And they're like, you know what? Bet. So let's take a look at what they have to say. And free, please feel free to ask me to pause to make any points that you would like throughout this. Let's go. Raise your hand if you are undecided still at this point. If the election were held today, who would you vote for? If you had to pick uh, if the election were held today between Trump, Harris, a write-in, and not voting. Yeah, I'm, I'm. Hang on, wait a minute. He didn't even mention any of the third party. Right. right. <laughs> Did you notice that? That well, that's that's quite common in like a lot of these New York Times polls and stuff. They just say Trump, Harris, or other, or something. Basically, <laughs> yeah. acting acting like third party candidates don't exist. That's interesting. Let's continue. I think I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris. I just can't get over what happened in 2020 and, and what's been reaffirmed in the debates and, and the general, uh, you know, statements made during the campaign. Um, not just the riot, but the alternative slate of electoral schemes is, is a bridge too far for me. Angelo, just if you can ask briefly, um, you've been, you know, a little bit leaning Harris. And I know tonight you raised some concerns. Um, why are you in the right end camp right now? I in my opinion, I just the more I look back into it, the more I watch the debate, the more I look re look into her campaign. I just I cannot trust her. I will never. I'm not going to vote for Trump, but I just the more I think about it, the more I just don't know if I can vote for Harris. I just do not trust her. I'm more inclined to write someone who I feel like would best represent me through my vote. Why? Why would uh, this young man, this young gentleman, say that he just does not trust her? Like. <laughs> 
Is, is there something in the water league? That, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. You I mean, know, that, because, uh, I mean, that, something that, happened in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that proves that these Gen Zers who uh, looking on the screen are, are roughly eight years old. That proves that they uh, they actually know more than your average 45-year-old liberal across America to not trust Kamala Harris. If you look at her entire record, basically everything she's done has been as a Republican. There's almost nothing. I mean, I don't even know what people could point to to say she's not a Republican. Um, and to me, what's funniest about this, you know, if you're just looking at the Trump Harris race, ignoring the third party for the moment, the, the funniest thing about this is Trump and Fox news and the other right wing outlets have had to invent a fake Kamala Harris <laughs> in order, <laughs> in order to have something to run against that isn't them. Like, They've had to say she's against fracking when she has done nothing but promote fracking and oil. They've had to say she's Marxist when nothing she's ever done is Marxist. They've had to say she's for open borders when the numbers show that Biden and Harris have deported more people in the last few years, like almost double what Trump uh, deported during many of his years. They, they, you know, they've they've tried to say she's anti-Israel when she has proven and Biden has proven again and again that they will endorse and support this genocide at every step. So they've had to invent a fake Kamala Harris to try and have something to run against that isn't just a Republican, a far right wing Republican. Lee, I, I got a just crazy visual in my head as you were explaining that I was a, I was seeing you as one of the policy advisors for Kamala Harris, and you would have patches of hair missing from just pulling it out. Like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's she, she, she's a she's a shit show, but so is Donald Trump. So this this is what an empire. As I've got the collapsing empire on the screen behind me, this is what a collapsing empire vomits up. Uh, you know the the term Chris Hedges is fond of using vomits up when you're at the, when you're in these last stages, these last decades that it, it, it has been gutted. It's soulless. And this is the uh, vomitous remnants that are supposed to, quote unquote, lead us in this time when we should be creating a new normal. We should be creating a new normal that is not war, death, and destruction, that is sustainability, cooperation, diplomacy, justice, equality, <laughs> all of the things that these two vomitous masks stand against. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are the malignant boils of our society. Why are we voting for them? I have no idea. Let's continue. Aisha, how about you? You raise your hand. If you had to vote today for Harris, why Harris? Um, I just want to see what she will do because I know she's going to have to run again later. So I'm hoping she will get, like be an exemplary president for this term. That's my only reason. Okay. And Abigail, how about you? I need to... Some people said some things tonight that uh, motivate me to do a little bit more research about the other side to January 6th that I haven't heard about before. But the thing is, I do not want to vote for someone. I do not want to tell my children that I voted for someone that that actually threatened democracy. I, you know what I mean? I need to analyze and think a little bit more before I just vote for Trump. Oh, OK. So first of all, we thank everybody for participating. Absolutely. No bad things to say about people who participate in these conversations. We thank you so much. <laughs> but does anybody at this table need to take a deep breath? Because I do. I just yeah. do. We've so. been listening to Undecideds for weeks on, on two-way. And it is, it's really hard to believe that there are still people who might vote third party or try to write in. It's just such yeah. a lack of understanding about the stakes and about why that's just throwing your vote away. Oh, yeah. That to me is an insult to these young people. They just don't understand. Wait a minute, Lee, do you feel that there is a deep disconnect between these millionaires sitting around a table in a million dollar studio? Is there any type of disconnect in your view? <laughs> yeah, just slightly. 
I mean, it is hilarious to come back from Gen Zers who are making some solid points. I mean, they've been misled in terms of uh, thinking that January 6th is all that matters and things like that. And the, the girl who had a good thought, we should not vote for something that threatens democracy, doesn't understand what's the, the deeper uh, reality, which is that our democracy has been destroyed many decades ago carefully and by money and interest in so many ways, so that yeah. democracy is gone. Uh, and she doesn't understand that, but her drive is a good, honest drive to care about democracy. And then you cut back to these, like you say, multimillionaires sitting around in a circle going, oh my goodness, why, how could Gen Zers not just get in line behind Harris? What is wrong with them? And these are the people, you know, that circle, that table, that network, MSNBC, these are the people who have manufactured consent for millions upon millions of deaths. The, the, the estimates of how many have died in the global war on terror is six million. And then you have God, the genocide in Gaza right now that they've manufactured consent for. And that's that panel. That's that circle. They are those psychopaths sitting there saying, how do these people not just believe everything we say on MSNBC? I don't understand. And even especially coming from Mika Brzezinski, the, the daughter of, uh, you know, Big Nev Brzezinski, who essentially came up with the the, the half of the empire's plans for the past 50 years, uh, even though he's no longer alive. Uh, yeah, it's just hilarious. I mean, this is what the empire is. It's this, this fuck theater. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I would say to any of the Gen Z that's watching my program right now, you, your desire to demand better is the logical thing to do. It does not matter what these old heads, including myself, say, because you're looking at your wallet and your bank accounts. You're looking at what's going on abroad. You're looking at what's going on here at home. And the fact that somebody would demand you or try to uh, wave away or discount your feelings and go, well, they just don't realize what's at stake. No, 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 no. The old heads don't realize what's at stake. Some, I'm not going to say all, but as somebody that's old enough to be their father, I know I look good. I know I look good. I'm more stressed. But as somebody who's old enough to be their father, some of them their father, I look at them and go, you're right. You're right. You're correct in your demands. You're correct in your outrage. And this is why I'm telling you, you don't have to choose either die by drowning or die by burning. There's actually a third option. Even if it's a slight uh, choice, or even if it's a, 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 a slight chance that you may get it, you you rather risk that rather than either dying by drowning or dying by burning. And I just want to say that to all the young people that are watching. Because what you're experiencing right now is really empire in decline. And... I'd rather walk away. Look, I'd rather be a live chicken than a dead duck. So I might as well go with the people who are actually going to help keep me alive instead of going with the either the fire or the drowning. And some some other quick points on voting. Uh, first of all, I actually believe everyone should vote because uh, th there are a lot of things up for grabs that are not just the presidency. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of ballot initiatives that matter. There are local politics that are not as bought off as uh, top politics, you know, the federal elections. But on top of that, um, there, there's some other things people should know, especially Gen Zers or maybe new to this. First of all, if you're not in a swing state, then you don't matter. Uh, not on the presidency. So if you don't matter anyway on the presidency, why not vote for a third party? Support that party. Support the the, the protest vote, uh, especially if you're not in a swing state. We can argue about swing states in a minute if, if people want to. But especially if you're not in a swing state, like vote for a third party, support whatever Green Party, Cornell West, Claudia de la Cruz, these awesome people that are running that actually have uh, these ideas right, that actually anti-genocide, et cetera. And all of those things serve to grow their movements, to grow their parties, to grow their ideas. If they get 5%, you know, if the Green Party gets 5%, it can have all these implications that are important. So there's so many reasons, especially if you're not in a green state, uh, sorry, a swing state, to vote third party. But 
on top of that, there's another calculation, which uh, I was just uh, told about recently um, and uh, by Sam Husseini, who came up with it. Uh, I'm sure he's not the first to do it, but and you can find out more about it at votepact dot org basically what you do that's p-a-c-t basically what you do is if you are going to hold you if you're one of the millions of americans who are going to hold your nose and vote either harris or trump you just find someone else in your state family member whatever who's going to hold their nose and vote for the other one harris or trump and you both agree not to vote for harris or trump but to vote third party and in that way it does not impact at all the outcome of harris trump but it, again, supports third parties. And if you could get millions of people across this country to make that deal with someone else, and obviously it's easiest if it's someone you trust, if it's a friend, if it's a family member, et cetera, that's the easiest way to do it. Um, but if you had millions of people doing that, they're not impacting the end result, but they are impacting how many votes third parties get. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned, in the, the radical in me says, if you're in a swing state, Go third party, like show them that you do not reward genocide at all. Well, because yeah. So, so if we have the third party debate, I mean, there's a million reasons that the, these two candidates are so similar on so many that it doesn't actually have an impact. So, yeah, yeah, agreed. Let's continue. Uh, let's finish up with the uh, the liberal crew. <laughs> I just, God. I just have oh. to say, I mean, I'm just trying to find that grace <laughs> in this nice. moment, but I, I will say, um, you know, I'm a millennial, I'm not Gen Z, so maybe I'm not the best messenger, but I would just, we all have some friends who are saying neither of these candidates fully supports, you know, my views or, and I think Gen Z comes from a generation where politics has been broken for a long time. Okay. Mm. I'm sympathetic. Oh. What I would just say is... <sighs> The way to build power <laughs> is to start with the reality that we have. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to throw away your vote. This is a choice between two people and Not that's right. it. Right. So are you really going to deny your neighbors Medicaid? Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Lee, I, I hope you have some liquor in that because I, I, I need I, to sit I love. I love Mika Brzezinski's like just groaning while the other people. Like, uh -huh. oh. Oh. Uh, no, it's these people are are disgusting, and it's, they they it's their job to tell people these two candidates are polar opposites. Oh, really? Are they? Then tell me how Harris is the polar opposite on oil, on climate crisis, on immigration, on actually nuclear weapons. So there's two real existential threats that are that within the next like decade, existential to humanity. One yeah. is nuclear fallout. One is nuclear winter. Another is uh, climate crisis. These are the two that could kill all humans or almost all humans in the next 10 years. On mm -hmm. both of those, you have the Biden-Harris administration that has pumped more oil and gas and allowed more oil drilling and allowed more fracking than the Trump administration did. And on nuclear weapons, yes, Trump tore up several of the non-proliferation agreements with Russia. However, first of all, Biden and Harris have not done anything to re-sign any of those. But on top of that, they have spent way more on what they call, you know, refurbishing or renovating our nuclear arsenal, but is basically creating more nuclear weapons to actually further push us towards some sort of nuclear Armageddon. Uh, they also push us towards that nuclear Armageddon with the proxy war in Ukraine. They also push us towards that with uh, facilitating Israel, several wars and genocide. So saying that these people are different is you're just you're being absolutely illogical absolutely irrational if you look at the legit facts and not some kind of emotional anything yeah absolutely and in fact let's go to this because i wanted to make sure i get this article in before we uh before you take off uh this is out of the jerusalem post uh and i want to just oppose this with the election uh, the headline says U.S. threatens Israel, resolve humanitarian crisis in Gaza or face an arms embargo. It says failure to rectify the situation would lead to consequences for Israeli aid under American law, the White House said. So this is coming directly from the White House. 
Uh, it says the U.S. told Israel that it would impose an arms embargo on the Jewish state if it does not resolve the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. It says the White House expressed deep concern over the deterioration of the humanitarian situation in Gaza in recent weeks and called for urgent steps within the next month to reverse this trend. Uh, Lee, let me ask you this. Is this a legitimate move to uh, quell the, the suffering in Gaza, or is this a political move? Which one do you see? They have said some form of this many times over the past year of genocide. And by the way, for those who don't know me, uh, I, I say that as an anti-Zionist Jew, and there are million of us, millions of us around the world. So don't pretend that Israel equals all Jews, uh, which is what Israel wants you to think. But uh, they, they've said some portion of this or some kind of this for months and months. It's a red line to go into southern Gaza. It's a red line to go into Rafa. It's a red line to not let us get aid in. It's a red line to attack in this way or that way. They, they keep throwing these red lines. And after that, we are, oh, you are so out. Oh, we are not going to even answer your phone calls after that. And it has all been bullshit. At no point have they proven that any of this is true, that they ever will stop these every 36 hours shipments of bombs to rain down on children to commit genocide. At no point have they shown it to be true. In fact, uh, uh, stories have just broken recently that Blinken was in, had, had like his own office in the so-called defense department headquarters in Israel as they were coming up with these policies of dropping bombs on aid shipments. Some of them became quite famous stories like the World Central Kitchen one. Uh, and by and Blinken was approving, is, is sitting there in the, like literally physically there approving of these policies to bomb aid organizations. Um, anyway, the, the point is, I'd have to see it. I'd have to see some kind of action that this is real. At every point, the Biden-Harris administration have shown that they will not get in the way of this genocide. And in fact, at the debates, what do you have? You have her arguing with Trump and Biden arguing with Trump in the first debate as to who supports this genocide the most. No, oh, I support them. I want to kill innocent people more. No, no, no. You're not going to kill innocent people at all. Oh, no, I love killing innocent people. Like that was the debate. Uh, it yeah. was not who's going to stop the genocide. Yeah. And speaking of which, what happened at that hospital as of recently where uh, people, children and people were being burned alive. Look, this is the George Floyd moment, meaning you're seeing the carnage in front of you. Are you going to allow this carnage to continue? You have both parties are still promising to allow this to continue. So there are third options and there is also options to organize. Are we just going to sit by and allow this to keep happening? Because if they're going to do it to them, like I said, if they're going to allow it to brown people abroad, they're going to do it to people like us here. There is a fourth a option. You can gouge your eyes out with ice cream scoops. So I'm thinking of that. I mean, as a fan of Rocky Road, that's not a bad option. But uh, yeah. But that being said, uh, I just wanted to thank you. And I want to make sure that we we'll be very respectful of your time. But I also wanted to uh, highlight that you also have a podcast. Uh, so I want to make sure I get into this as well. Uh, so if you can tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, I have a few older podcasts. Uh, there's the Lee Camp Show and uh, and Government Secrets and some others. But I, I launched a brand new one, which is just my comedy stuff. Because uh, you know, for people just tuning in to you know, they're your fans and they've never seen my stuff. I'm sure I did not come off as hilarious on this interview because most of what I do, or a lot of what I do, is live streams uh, every week. Uh, by the way, that's people want to check that out. It's uh, YouTube Rumble. It's called Dangerous Ideas. Um, but I did launch a new podcast that is just my comedy segment. So for people who are looking to, you know, to get some laughs out of these issues rather than just uh, tears, or maybe it could be tears of laughter, but uh, it's called Just Comedy. You probably have to search Just Comedy with Lee Camp to find it, but it's on Spotify and all the other podcast platforms, totally free to listen. And uh, I'd love for people to just give it a try, just to, you know, see, see what you think. There's nothing to lose, completely free. 
And if you like it, give it a rating or click the bell icon. So Spotify will let you know when a new one comes out, et cetera. Uh, yeah, that's all my comedy segments. And then everything else is on uh, YouTube Rumble called uh, Dangerous Ideas. All right. Thank you so very much for coming on. Please do not be a stranger. I know it took us a while to get you back on because you were doing some traveling and you also are very busy as well with family. So uh, thank you so very much for gracing us with your presence and uh, adding and elevating the, the conversation discourse. Thank you. Always an excellent show and uh, solidarity and don't give up, James. You're awesome. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses, and have a beautiful day.